Hey, Mark, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. So in this video, we're going to cover off some valuable lessons, I think, for some investors, right? When it comes to our tenant board, we're going to cover a couple of hot topics on there. And one I really want to focus on, and you're going to go through the article and walk a few points. With, I want to bring it up now because I know I'm going to forget. This is in the article, it talks about making sure your paperwork is 110% correct and using a paralegal or a lawyer to check it off. So this is going back several years for me on 94 Bentley Crescent. Excuse me. I had a scumbag tenant. They screwed me so good. Went to Landlord Legal. April Stewart looked after it. And as soon as I mentioned the name, she went, oh, my God, I evicted them from Peter Street. Oh, fuck. Long story short, we get through the whole thing. The N4, L1, got to represent me at the, at the tribunal. Guess what was wrong in the paperwork? The date? It said 94 Bentley Street. It was 94 Bentley Crescent. We had an order. Sorry, sheriff can't execute this. Street's wrong. <laughs> Start all over. So I want to mention that heads up because it states that in the article. And can you imagine going through something like that in these times? So I started back over, but again, it was like six, seven, maybe seven weeks of that. Now that could be seven months. So I want to drop that bomb on everybody and make sure your paperwork is done under 10%. Because Yeah, you know, I've heard that too. I've heard that they spelled somebody's name wrong. Yeah. I've heard that they didn't put one of the dates was wrong somewhere along the lines. Anything, anything at all. And it's done. You got to start all over. Done. Yep. So, okay. That's why I, I, my clients, all I just tell them, get a paralegal. Don't do this alone. That That's before we get into it. Folks, if you have investment properties out there and you're going through this, which a lot of people are, do not do this alone. And no matter how experienced you are, do the right thing. Get a paralegal to really coach you through the right paperwork, the whole bit, because it gets to be a disaster. Do well, it. Mark, you know, one reason I wanted to go over this article so we've talked about this many, many times. Landlords reporting increase in tenants refusing to pay rent or leave. 100%. But the one thing um, that is bothering me the most, we're getting a lot, a lot of comments about what do you expect? Landlords are terrible. Like we're getting trashed a lot ourselves with some of the things we're saying. And one of the things that they they talk about here, um, we're going to go back to this, but one thing before I forget mm -hmm. is that they actually, this paralegal company or property management company, um, hold on. They said that this never used to be that much of a problem because things were done in a timely manner. Right. But they're under, they're under resourced, right? They don't have enough people for it. Um, court cases or tribunals are up double digits, right? They're backlogged. This is where it all kind of comes together. So it's taking several months to get through a process that should really take no more than three, no more than four weeks. Now it's like eight months. And in that article, it talks about you know, go back, I think it was 84,000 new cases right there. You can see it. So right here, it says, in an email statement, a spokesman said there, there was a 31% increase in the number of applications received in the calendar year of 2023 to approximately 84,000 new applications. That's massive. And it, and it was a lot of the L1s and L9s. And the L9s are the ones that, that they've done a mediation with. And they've agreed, uh, a landlord and a tenant agreed on whatever payment plan or whatever, then it falls apart. So, really, they try to get us to, you know, get this done and to work together. But, you know, the repeat offenses keep going through or are high in the L9 area where the tenant agrees to some, doesn't, there's no follow through. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> and I can't even find it. I guess we'll have to start at the beginning. But I, sure. I remembered reading that and I, and I thought, yeah, you know, People are complaining about it and landlords are talking about it and complaining because it has changed. Well, sure it's changed. That's that's why people are getting out of this, this, this business because, you know, 
yes, it's lucrative once you've had them for 10 years, 15 years. Yes, they pay down. You, get some, you know, we hear of some good stories, but that's all we've been hearing is all the bad stories that are out there. And it's it's in every community today across Ontario. You can't get rid of tenants that don't pay. Well, and, they, and this is a tenant right. that the one that they're talking about in Fergus, this property management company, it, they lived in the building for years and they just stopped paying last summer. We still did try to work with them to get the rent paid and kind of keep uh, keep their tenancy. Ultimately, that's what we want to do is to save tenancies as much as possible. But the, but the tenant the tenant never them? responded. Right. Why would you want to save them if if you? Why would you want to keep that going? Well, if somebody's been with you for ten years and they've been paying and they've been decent, then you try to yeah. give you try yeah, to you give do. them, uh, you know help to get back on their feet sometimes right you do but not when a tenant has stopped paying for five months or ten months i know that's and, and in here it talks about that i think it was it, it took almost eight months from when the eviction order was uh filled for the tenant to leave that's what we're seeing hang on i'm gonna go back up on the hearing of february 1st we actually got the order on the 29th of february which is fast considering how things are lately but we didn't actually manage to get the sheriff out until april 10th well, Mark, they actually put the first application August 30th, 2023. Right, right. They didn't get a hearing until February. Right. And then in April, the sheriffs are back. You know, they go hand in hand. Yeah, the sheriffs are backlogged too. 100%. So they can't enforce them because they're weeks out. You imagine, and I've seen, I've had my place look like that. I have That's, to. This is what happens, right? And yep. You know, we've done a lot of content on this subject because to me, it's a great subject to talk about. And it's always in the news. And I really believe in getting it out there even more. So, you know, new landlords, experienced landlords can, you know, have some experience or have get something out of these videos. Because okay, this is, this is, yes. And this is what this, she said, this is not something that used to be a big issue. Every now and then you'd have somebody that didn't pay rent, but it would be like, you'd send them a notice, they would either pay or they would leave. Okay, so this issue that we're all bitching about isn't something that was happening all the time. In a timely manner, it was dealt with, and now it is not. So another real estate lawyer said the firm has also noted an increase. We're definitely seeing this a lot more nowadays. What she's saying is rent prices have increased, cost of living has increased, and tenants are also more informed about their rights and their ability to stay in the unit until there's an order from the landlord tenant board. So yeah. basically what she's saying is even though you're filing papers with them, the, the paperwork you're filing with them means nothing. Means okay. Nothing. It means nothing until they actually get to go to court and get a court order. So they're going to stay there until they get that. And they know it's months and months and months. They know that, but that's, that's been going on for the last couple of years and it's still not being fixed and it's not being addressed in this province. No, this is the problem. It's not being addressed, Dan. And that's, you know, and most of these, you know, again, to this article, to other articles, it's all the people that, you know, have, you know, people just, these people are just everyday people buying investment properties for their future, right? They're not. Well, she even people, said right? that all of the people they represent, this company, pop. are mom, mom and pop, just right. small little people, right? right? That have one or two properties, maybe three at best. At right? best. So this is the problem where, and now is, you know, they have one bad experience. They're pulling the plug. They're done. We're done. Some of them are taking hefty losses, have to step up, step up financially, paying the mortgage for eight months. The lender's not going to accept that. Sorry, we want our money. Thanks very much. Yeah, but so, Mark, look at the comments we get. Investors shouldn't complain. I don't feel sorry for them. Yeah, well, they're, they haven't been on the other side of the foot. So I always shut them ones up because I do. I don't, I, I don't care what some, and some of these usually are the ones from the tenants that are bad, right? I like the one, some of the good tenants pipe up and say, you know, we've been a great tenant for 20 years and we've never, I, I love those comments because it's great, but so many of them aren't that and think this is an okay, come to Ontario, you live for free. And yeah. that's the problem. So when we talk about a housing crisis and we talk about, you know, uh, immigration and we talk about not enough rentals, this isn't helping the problem. No, I know. Right? That's what I was talking to my my one client this morning who's going to probably sell their investor uh, investment property. 
Um, that's exactly what I said. Doug Ford is bitching and saying about all these new things he's going to put into place to increase housing and we need to increase housing. And, and what's happening is all they're, all they've done is get all the investors, the small people with the upper lower rentals, they're just getting them out of the market. They're just, they just stop. They're selling them. They're, they're getting bought up by people. People live it in them. And the ones that have, you know, these, you know, basements that they rented out for years, they sit, they sit vacant. You're in one of them right now. You don't run it out because nope. you don't want to do this. You, well, you know, and CTV like News requested an interview with the LTB, but they declined. The, the number one thing, they just do not respond, right? So until this issue gets really fixed. Okay, and listen to this. The LTB said it has implemented a number strategy to reduce book, uh, backlogs, including hiring 46 full-time and 29 part-time adjudicators since May 2023. That's almost a year ago. Did it fucking help anything? No, no, it hasn't helped at all very much. No, oh. it's not, right? No. It's not going to. And I saw something before that the rents are going up 2% a month. And we can see it when we did the rental video on, on how much rents have gone up. I was astonished at how much it was, right? So, and then these people that... You know, typically who are behind in their on their rent in eight months. That's what it looks like. They they get their properties looking like that. So mat and they look like the one the other one with the cigarette butts on the floor and the mattress all decaying, rotting. That's how they so you can imagine the expense. It's it's just not the rent. It's the it's the cleanup. It's the repairs to the property. Like that. It's costing tens of thousands of dollars, right? It's not an investment anymore. It's there's too much risk involved in doing this today. Well, and the other thing is, it's like anything, you know, and I had a comment on one of our videos. There's bad landlords and bad tenants, and there is. I, I, I agree. It's the same like there's bad real estate agents. There's good ones. There's bad doctors. There's good ones. Yep. And, you know, there's a few good forums. So if people are going through this, you know, openroom.ca, go on to that website. Okay. It is. Yeah. Pretty easy to navigate that field and to to see if they've had any court uh, these potential tenants that you're interviewing or have an application. You can see if they've had any eviction notices or, or orders from the LTB. It's all there, and they encourage people to post that. So if you're going through a tough time and you have something, they upload the documents. That's the only way this is going to get really solved. And is to educate each other on on stuff like this to work together to safeguard your investments. You got to do it, right? And look how detailed credit applicants, look how detailed rental applications are today. We want to know everything. Well, and you we know what's really, really want. funny about that is some of my best tenants over the years, because I really only have one now, um, had bad credit. Me too. They were the great. But <laughs> back then, we didn't, we didn't really worry about it. I went strong on the reference. Now, I have to have bulletproof that it's everything's perfect because I can't go through it because it's it's eight months. I got to think eight months. Can I afford mortgage payments for eight months and repairs? Not really. Right. So I, it's I know. Well, and before, like if you get a kid, if you got a kid that's just moving out on his own or he's younger, his credit could look shitty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't even have credit a lot of times, you know, at 23, 24, 25. But he could no. be working at Honda, making good money, be a responsible kid. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I but mean, he'd be in the he'd be in the weeds now. Forget it. He wouldn't be looked at, right? Unless his parents step up a cosign and says, "Hey, he doesn't pay. I'll guarantee the rent." Okay, mm -hmm. I'd take a chance on that. But I'd want to meet everybody. Mm -hmm. I'd want to be changing numbers. Like, yeah. unfortunately, the bad tenants are making it more difficult for the good ones. Oh, they're wrecking it. They're causing this. They're causing the rent increases. They're causing this. And the entire government's the, the, they're the number one person. These are the number two people that are causing it. And it's not going away anytime soon. And listen, every single article, Mark, that you and I have gone over or the information that we've gathered, the LTB will not comment. There's no comments. They're not comment. It, okay. No but comment. as taxpayers, are we not paying them? Well, I agree, but this is Canada. So this, no, nothing ever changes here. We get half the story. So so there's absolutely no verification. There's no um, 
remuneration. There's no, what I mean is they don't have to answer to anybody, even though we're paying them. I don't know, but this isn't getting solved. No, look what's going on right now with this budget and everything else. And tenants can negotiate and tenants, you can improve your credit score so you can negotiate better with a landlord to get better rent. And we're good luck on that. That's just not happening, right? It's just not happening. But why aren't we looking at the root cause of the problems, the breakdown in the system? How do we get landlords back into the province as investors again? How do we do that? Fix the LTB. You fix the LTB, people if will you, come back. Yes. And the LTB wasn't as bad as it was now. Like, And that's what people, that's why I get kind of mad at people because investors invest, most of them, to put their kids through college or for retirement these people aren't investing to make millions of dollars. They're not making millions of dollars, okay? They're trying to give themselves some kind of nest egg because right. they don't have one, okay? Right. So most of my clients, that's kind of what they're, that's what they're doing. And if it's going, if they're going to streamline the process and fix the process, people are willing to take the risk on that. Yeah, but there's there's no there's no updates, there's no transparency or communication on this is what we're doing with the LTB. There's we don't no one knows anything. Oh well, we hired new adjudicators last May of 2023, and it's done shit. Done nothing. So until that gets fixed, and then you know I didn't really follow the new budget that's coming out, but I, I saw something where on capital gains, June 25th, if that if they can don't take this as you know as concrete because I could have missed some steps in here and reading it, but. It talked about, you know, we know 50% of the gain is taxed. If it's over $250,000 gain, it's taxed at six, not taxed, it's 66% of the gain. That's taxed. Okay, Mark, it gets worse than that. So. I just talked to Rob about it. Okay, what did he say? The mortgage guy. Most of these guys that have more than one or two properties or a lot of real estate agents these days too incorporated. The capital gains on incorporated for, for a company mm -hmm. is 66% from dollar one. Dollar one. So, so there's no incentive there. There you go. You risk, people aren't investing in housing anymore. It's going to come to that. Or people, what are we going to see? We're going to say, you know what? I think it's time to sell before June 25th because I want more of this money. We may see that. Well, we Mark, or or oh. now no one can fucking sell because. <laughs> They're going to have to, it. they're going to have to pay the capital gains on it. Right. So I don't know, we make it tougher and tougher in this housing and it's not a simple thing to do. And, you know, I was, I was talking to Tim this morning and, you know, he's going through some development stuff and all that. It's, 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 it's just a fee. It's just a money grab all the way along and nothing gets done. No. Nothing. And you know what? I read the new Ford stuff too. And he's saying that he's going to put the municipalities are going to have more control. Like that's better. They, no. The municipality is just putting fees upon fees. They're the ones holding all this crap up. Absolutely. And he can change anything he wants, but the each municipality still has bylaws. They yeah. still have building departments, development fees, all this other shit that, and I don't care what Ford says. It's all smoke and mirrors, Mark. It shows that they're doing something and nothing's being done, though. Behind the scenes, nothing gets done. A small group of people know what's going on, in a sense, and the general population really don't. And that's the problem, right? I, I have clients that have been waiting almost to do like a fourplex, sixplex, like bigger buildings, that it's almost been two years. Yeah, that shouldn't happen. So there's a fourplex. There's four new apartments onto the market. So anyway, I think we talked this to death. I could talk for about hours, but folks, just make sure the paperwork is done extremely well. Do not do this pro thing alone. Do not go through the process of finding your own tenant. I get calls all the time. Help me out. I, you know, my tenant doesn't pay for five months. My first question, who selected the tenant? Oh, I did to save some money. Don't do that. Spend the money. That's the first thing you need to do. Spend the money, get the, get some professional help to guide you through the process. On the, yeah. On the and you know what we've been getting... I, if somebody has more than one property, even if you have two with four apartments, get a property management company. Yeah, yeah, you have to today. You have to you have to get some uh, that to do it to, to rent it out. Let them select the tenants. Let them do do it all. Because the, the let's be real, Mark. Between you and I, as real estate agents, we can help you find a tenant, but then we're out. Yeah, 
Like you, you know what I mean? Like after, after the initial thing, like we don't have anything to do with it anymore. I don't do it anymore. I did it once for an investor client in specs, probably 10, 12 years ago. And I, you know, helped their, the process and found them to, you know, vetted the tenant well and then six months and wheels fell off the bus. I said, I'm never doing this again because it could impact my relationships with that, with, with my clients. So I said, you know what, I'll give you advice and help you through it, but I won't be responsible. You have to make those decisions. I'll tell you, you know, how to safeguard yourself, but I always say, get a property manager. Don't use a real estate agent to list your property for lease. I, I think it's the wrong approach to do. Well, because we only can go off so much, so much. And, and at the end of the day, uh, we're not paid to go serve N11s or N4s or N12s. Like, you know, once you get the tenant, the tenant is yours and it's over. That's right. We found them. And and again, I don't think real estate agents can do the thorough background in a sense. Yeah, we can ask for a lot of things, but I don't know. Property managers have people that are specialized in that. They have people that are looking for certain properties. I'd, I'd go that route any day of the week. I well, just- not only that- I think they can actually pull people's credits. There's something they pay for where they can, like we, yeah. you and I can't go and pull somebody's credit. There's lots of agencies out there that that offer that service, right? Just Google them. I saw one of my Facebook feed the other day, a sponsored ad about that. You got to hey, pay though. You got to pay, but that's the right thing to do. Pay to pull the credit, right? They, you know, you need, you need that today. Yeah, but they have to be signed off. You can't just do that. No, no. But, or you go back and you can, you know, you can, you can pull your own credit up, Equifax. Just tell the tenant to say, we want to prove your credit bureau. Push it back on that. Well, yeah, that's, that's what I do when I list properties for lease, but you know, you can leave off a page or two. Well, you can. I, I'd be looking because they're usually always numbered. So there, there's a point. Look, you know, if there's a page or two in there missing, look at the bottom and see the numbers. So, because there's all kinds of scams. So that there's the point where hiring a professional will just help you navigate that and really reduce the risk. Yes. Right. So I, I think there's some good tips and I just always recommend getting people to to do their due diligence and take their time. Don't rush this process. Don't rush getting a tenant there. Oh, I'm going to lose a month's rent. Who cares? Who cares if you lose four oh, no, months? I, I'm with you. I always wait it out. I, there's no point. You don't have to rush. No rushing. So- Okay. Hey, if you like this uh, content, reach out, give it a follow, share, and uh, you have any questions on this, reach out to us or leave a comment. Perfect. Okay. See ya. See ya.